When a spacecraft returns from space, it essentially becomes a blazing fireball hurtling through Earth's atmosphere at incredible speeds. That's why any vehicle that wants to survive this process needs a thermal protection system. Traditionally, these systems are designed to sacrifice themselves, requiring replacement after each mission. But SpaceX is changing the game. With Starship, they're developing a heat shield that doesn't just protect the vehicle, but is also strong enough to protect itself, reaching a level of rapid reusability never seen in spaceflight before. So let's dive in today and see what secrets the Starship heat shield is holding. When SpaceX was working on the heat shield for Starship, they actually learned a lot from the space shuttle's design. Honestly, that's not surprising. SpaceX often studies older spacecraft to figure out what worked and what didn't. From an engineering point of view, the space shuttle was an incredible machine built by some of the smartest minds of its time. If you compare the heat shields on Starship and the shuttle, you'll notice some clear similarities. The material and coating used on Starship's tiles are very similar to a type of tile the shuttle used in its later years called AETB with TUFI coating. TUFI stands for Toughened Unipiece Fibrous Insulation. It's a more durable kind of tile coating that was made to handle impacts better and resist water. It replaced the older, more fragile RCG reaction cured glass coating, although Tufi was heavier, so NASA didn't use it everywhere on the shuttle. Starship's tiles have been found to contain materials like silica, aluminum borosilicate, and aluminum oxide, pretty much what you'd expect from those AETB style tiles. The black coating helps block infrared heat and the fibrous material underneath is designed to handle extreme temperatures during re-entry. One cool thing you can spot during Starship's re-entry is a glowing blue plasma around the ship. That blue glow comes from borosilicate in the tiles, which burns blue at high temperatures. Borosilicate is a special type of glass that doesn't expand or crack easily when it heats up quickly, which makes it perfect for dealing with the intense heat of coming back through the atmosphere. Overall, both Starship's tiles and the Space Shuttle's tiles do their job when it comes to protecting the vehicle during re-entry. But the shuttle's heat shield had one major flaw. It wasn't fully reusable. After each flight, many of the tiles would crack and sometimes tiles would even fall off. There were a few close calls where tiles came loose, but luckily they weren't in critical areas. Because of this, the shuttle had to be refurbished after every mission. Many of its tiles were custom made to fit specific spots, which meant the inspection and repair process took a long time. In fact, it often took NASA around eight to nine months to fully refurbish a single shuttle. This slow turnaround was one of the reasons the shuttle program wasn't sustainable. It simply couldn't fly often enough to be financially practical. SpaceX understood this problem and came up with a simpler, more efficient solution. Starship uses about 18,500 heat shield tiles, most of which are standardized in a hexagonal shape. These tiles are designed to interlock, making them easier to produce, install, and replace. This interlocking system helps reduce the time needed between flights, speeding up Starship's turnaround significantly compared to the shuttle. Because the tiles are arranged in a consistent pattern, the number of tiles around the vehicle's body needs to stay the same. As the vehicle narrows near the nose cone or flaps, the tiles gradually become smaller and thinner to maintain that same tile count. This allows for smooth coverage across the entire surface while keeping the design efficient and easy to maintain. On Starship's fifth test flight, SpaceX added a backup layer underneath the main heat shield tiles, an ablative heat shield. This layer is still used on the newer Block 2 version of the vehicle. The idea is simple. If any of the ceramic tiles fall off before re-entry, this extra layer underneath will help protect the ship. It does this by burning away during re-entry, carrying heat away with it. Unlike the main tiles, which are reusable, the ablative material is meant to be used only once. Under normal circumstances, this backup layer isn't supposed to activate at all. It's more of a safety net. The ablative sheets are applied in small sections and placed in key areas like the nose cone, fuel tanks, payload bay, skirt, and flaps. This added layer gives Starship an extra level of protection in case something goes wrong with the main heat shield during re-entry. Unfortunately, even though Starship's heat shield tiles are designed to handle extreme temperatures, they're not likely to be fully reusable just yet. They're made of ceramic, which is great at resisting heat, but also quite fragile. Ceramics can crack and are affected by temperature changes. They expand when hot and contract when cold. Over multiple flights, that constant stress can cause the tiles to wear down or break. If you've ever watched a Starship test flight, you can feel the massive shaking of the rocket even from a couple kilometers away. 
Now, imagine those thin, brittle ceramic tiles. Elon Musk has compared them to dinner plates or coffee cups. These tiles have to stay attached to the vehicle through all that vibration without falling off or cracking. That's no easy task. And it gets even trickier. The tiles have to be attached in a way that allows the structure underneath to move. For example, the tanks inside Starship hold super cold cryogenic fuel, which causes them to shrink when filled. Then, during re-entry, the entire structure heats up and expands. That means the gaps between the rigid tiles are constantly changing. In some parts of the vehicle, like near the cryogenic tanks, this movement can cause a 10 to 20% change in the spacing between tiles. That's really significant, for sure. There's also a bit of body flex during flight, especially when the engines steer the ship. This adds even more movement. That's why you can't just press them tightly against one another. The design has to allow just the right amount of room for expansion, contraction, and bending of the structure, otherwise the heat shield could fail. Making a fully reusable heat shield is an extremely difficult challenge. It's a problem that has never been completely solved before. The goal is to create a very fine weave of glass and aluminum oxide fibers. Aluminum oxide is basically the same material as sapphire, so you're dealing with a combination of glass and sapphire-like fibers arranged in a very precise structure. To make it work, you also need special coatings applied to the tiles, and everything has to be made in just the right geometry. Getting this right is what allows the heat shield tiles to survive re-entry and be reused. SpaceX is constantly working on improving this system. They're always tweaking the materials and trying to find the perfect combination, the right molecules in the right shapes arranged in the right way. Then they have to apply those tiles to the rocket with extreme precision. There's no room for error. And there's no supplier could provide the exact materials SpaceX needed. So they decided to vertically integrate the process. That means they now make the heat shield tiles themselves, completely in-house, to ensure they meet all the requirements for reusability and performance. Of course, making ceramic tiles more durable so they don't burn or crack is one way to improve heat shields. But SpaceX also explored completely different kinds of thermal protection systems. Back in late 2018 and early 2019, Elon Musk shared on Twitter that SpaceX was developing an advanced metal heat shield. The idea involved running liquid methane through tiny holes in the outer surface of the spacecraft. This would allow the vehicle to sweat and release heat. The concept is called transpiration cooling. It's similar to how humans sweat to cool down, except in this case, the sweat is propellant. Here's how it works. Gases don't conduct heat very well, which actually makes them great insulators. This is the same reason puffer jackets keep us warm. The air trapped inside acts as a barrier preventing body heat from escaping. Now, flip that idea. Instead of keeping heat in, you want to keep heat out. During re-entry, a spacecraft faces extreme temperatures. If you can create a thin layer of gas around the vehicle, it can act as a protective barrier, helping to block heat from reaching the surface. But there's a problem. Gases tend to spread out and mix with the surrounding air, so how do you keep that protective gas layer in place? That's where transpiration cooling comes in. The outer layer of the spacecraft is made from a porous material, kind of like a sponge at a microscopic level. Inside the spacecraft, there are tanks of pressurized gas. As the vehicle re-enters the atmosphere, gas is slowly pushed out through the tiny pores, creating that protective layer around the vehicle. As long as the gas keeps flowing, it maintains the barrier. It's like the spacecraft is sweating the entire way down, keeping itself cool. And once the mission is over, all you need to do is refill the gas tanks, and the vehicle could be ready to fly again much sooner than if it used traditional tiles. However, this method also has some downsides. For one, transpiration cooling systems usually weigh more than traditional systems like ablative shields or ceramic tiles. That's because you have to carry the cooling gas on board, which adds mass. To be safe, you'd also carry extra just in case, which adds even more weight. The exact amount of coolant needed depends on detailed physics, including the vehicle's flight path and the heat it will experience. Getting those calculations right is critical. There's also the issue of complexity. You need a full system inside the spacecraft to manage the gas flow, pipes, valves, control systems, and the porous heat shield material itself. All of that adds additional weight and increases the risk of failure compared to simpler systems. 
Because of these challenges, Elon Musk has expressed some skepticism about whether transpiration cooling is worth it for Starship. It's a promising idea, but not without trade-offs. Despite that, Starship still needs a highly robust heat shield system, not just for reusability, but also to withstand the extreme conditions of Mars. While Mars's atmosphere might seem less harsh at first glance, being thinner and composed mostly of carbon dioxide is actually more demanding during re-entry. Elon Musk explained that when CO2 is superheated during atmospheric entry, it turns into plasma and breaks apart, releasing free oxygen. Surprisingly, this results in more oxygen exposure than Earth's atmosphere, which is only about 20% oxygen by volume. On Mars, the breakdown of CO2 into carbon and O2 in its plasma state can lead to roughly two to three times more reactive oxygen. This reactive oxygen can aggressively oxidize the heat shield, essentially trying to burn right through it. The best option might require the best of both worlds, using transpiration-cooled metal tiles in the hottest, most demanding areas while relying on conventional ceramic tiles elsewhere to balance performance and weight.